Welcome back to the channel. My name is Abon. Welcome back to Local and Global with KV Mecklen on FM22. Things might look a bit different. I've had a bit of a move around on my desk, so things might look a bit different. I feel like I need something on that wall there, though, because it's a bit bare. Anyway, we have the last two games of the Belgian Pro League season today. There is a chance for us to maybe get some European playoffs if we do well. But we have two matches today. First of all, it's Gink away from home, and then we host Charleroi, uh, the last two games. And if we can stay within the top eight, then we'll at least have some playoffs of some sort, and maybe a chance to get into Europe next season. As always, if you're enjoying this series, drop a like, leave comments, and subscribe if you haven't or if you're new. And uh, let's jump into the video. Last episode was a big 4-1 win against Circle of Bruges, a much needed victory after failing to win the previous six. We do have a fair bit to get through today because we have two matches to play off camera and a youth intake as well. Uh, so there's quite a bit to get through today. It might be a long one, uh, but let's start by looking at what happened in the four games we played off camera. Circle of Bruges looking to try and uh, build on their big win over Circle of Bruges. Oh, what a start that is. Sandy Walsh has just gifted Antwerp the goal with 20 seconds on the clock. It's Haberer. Togi goes back to Walsh, who has not had a good start to the game. He gifted the opposition a goal in the first minute. Togi on the ball again here. Takes it past the red shirt of Dessar. Here's Van den Enden. Balato. Essahel. Togi's there again, and it's an equalising goal. It's 1-1, and we haven't even played four minutes yet. And Togi gets this one. Konatar. And he's lost out to Belhaj, but Walsh does well with the interception. And he got caught by Belhaj, and Belhaj strikes the ball and scores for Antwerp. 11 minutes in, it's 2 1 Antwerp, and Walsh has been at fault for both goals. Connaughton with a throw to Essahel. Van der Berg, that's a great cross, and Togi with a header gets the lead for Mechelen in the 18th minute. Back to back goals in games, and 1 0 Mechelen. Tayuma to Chak Vitadze. Nyangbo. That's a good ball for Popescu. And Popescu scores. It's an equalising goal for Ghent. Two minutes left in the first half. It's 1 1. Basilio's got space to move into here. Can he find a cross? No, he's gone backwards. Konatar. Vanderberg. And Vanderberg, what a strike! 2 1 Mechelen. Three minutes, four minutes gone in the second half. Vanderberg with a thunderous effort there. Boknovitz to Elmansdorp. And he's gone long. Van den Eden does well to win the header. Here's Togi. And Good Johnson's in the box and he's looking for a ball. And he's going to get it. Good Johnson wins the header and scores to make it 3 1 Mechelen with less than 20 minutes to go. And that's surely three points for the Yellow and Reds. Here's Basilio. And he's keeping going here and he's moved over to the right channel. Finds Togi. Togi's been in good form recently. He set up goals and he scored goals. And he set up Good Johnson there, who scores in back-to-back -back games. And it's 1-0 Mechelen with 13 minutes gone. Here's Nosta to Walsh. Walsh forward to Togi. Good Johnson sends through Van den Enden, but he's got to try and find a cross here. He has. And it's Ezehel who hits it on the volley. And with less than two minutes to go, or one minute to go, in the first half, it's the lead double through Ezehel. Essahel to Basilio. And that's a great ball for Good Johnson. And can he get a second of the game? He can. He's chipped it over the goalkeeper. And with less than five minutes gone in the second half, Good Johnson gets his second and Mechelen get their third. Here comes Noster. Van der Berg out wide for Walsh. He's got plenty of space to move into here. That's a good ball for Togi. Togi holding it up, and that's uh, found Good Johnson. And it's Essahel, and it's 1 0 Mechelen against Union, 11th minute of the game. I mean, Essahel scores, I think, his third of the season, and it's 1 0. Here's Kaufman. Bosch over the top, and that's found a Smet, and the Smet scores, and it is 1 1. Union get the equalising goal in the 63rd minute. Essahel to Basilio. Basilio with the cross. It's gone over everybody, but Togi's going to have another chance to put it in here. And Basilio gets the ball back, and he puts it into the goal. It's 2-1 Mechelen, 74th minute. Walsh to Vandenberg. Here's Togi. Is it going to be another good delivery by the right winger? It's not bad. 
It's uh, not a great punch by Matic. It's Haas! Goodness me, the 18-year-old Adriano Haas has scored the third for Mikel in the 88th minute. What a moment for the teenager. So we did lose to Antwerp, which was kind of, you know, expected. We're away from home and they're fourth. But then we beat Ghent, Muscron and Union. Um, so, you know, four wins in our past five is good going. Just a quick look at Adriano Haas. 18-year-old uh, defensive midfielder scored the third goal in that last game. Um, we had a few issues in midfield with um, injuries and people uh, being left the club. So I put him on the bench and I brought him on for like 10 minutes and he scored a goal. So good for him. So he's 18, he came through the youth intake a few years ago, it's his first game and he scored the goal. There really hasn't been an opportunity to give minutes to players like these in this save because, you know, as we're not really going to be at clubs for very long, you know, we want to try and give these, these youngsters chances, but we're not really going to see them develop, are we? Unless we take some along the way and maybe bring them bring them through to our next clubs. So let's have a look at the league table then. With those results, uh, we're back in sixth place, which is where we were before our rotten run before Christmas. So at least we've done well there. A fifth to eighth gets those European places playoffs. So we're doing well there. And currently, AA yeah, again, are on 48 points. So we're five points clear with two to play for. So if we can get a point in one of our last two games, then we should be okay. We had a youth intake. And we had a 15-year-old with three stars. This is Felician Denis. He's a right winger. He came in on the youth intake and he was three stars straight away. One of the best players I think I've ever had through youth intake. You know, I don't think I've ever had someone who's three stars straight away, like a, reg a starter at 15. So I'm going to hope and pray that I can keep hold of this guy for as long as I can because, uh, yeah, he looks like he's got a big, big future. Other notable players, we've got Emil Verbruggen here, a defensive midfielder. Already got 15 tackling. He's got good aggression, good work rate. So again, this guy's got a uh, a promising future. Kasper van Luz, a centre mids, 13 passing, 30 technique, 12 first touch. Decent vision, balance is good. It's a really good youth intake, actually. In transfer news, uh, I didn't mention that Dirk Asare did leave uh, on loan at the end of the transfer window to Danes. And also Stanislas Mavinga, our American midfielder, has gone on loan to Elfsborg for the rest of the season just to try and get some first-team football because he wasn't really being played too much. And that's kind of why Adriana Haas came in last game because, you know, this guy's gone. So now on to team news. Uh, and we have a number of issues and I think they're all in defence. So first of all, Marco Konata is suspended after picking up too many yellows. Uh, not only that, but Dylan Dassey, the other left back, is also injured. So Basilio is going to have to go back in at left back today, uh, which means that Nicholas Storm will get a start. Oh, yeah. And on top of that, both starting centre backs are injured. Matt Snost is injured. He's out for two to three weeks with a twisted ankle. And Pavel Botnovic has been out for a little while with a lower back stress fracture. He's going to miss about another month. So, yeah, we are really down to bare bones defensively. So what that means is that Bellato and Vanden Branden are going to play at centre back today. And I don't think they've played together all season. Van den Eden is going to go back in. He was suspended in the last game. We have got a difficult last couple of games before the season ends, but hopefully we can get results um, that will allow us to finish in the top eight. And hopefully other results will go our way as well. Ghent are a side that we need to sort of focus on. They're five behind us. Also Lamel and Anderlecht. So those are the three sides that we kind of need to be doing better than. But Ghent coming forward here with 10 minutes on the clock. It's Andingra. And it's a header and, well, it's a missed header by Balato. And Basim Saraf is there with a free hit pretty much. 1-0 Genk with less than 11 minutes played. Gilmano with the ball to Adingra. And, um, yeah, the cross would have been dealt with. Balato should have done better there with the header, really. That's where we missed Noster and Botnovic. They're both, you know, pretty good aerially. One of those would have easily cleared that. So that's not really a good start. And now they're coming forward again, Genk here. Adingra with the ball again. Here's Lakumi, and Ading has got the ball back, and oh wow, that, I don't uh, that might count. Love to see it's put in by Onowachu. Yeah, he was easily onside. Deary me, what a terrible start to the game. Let's uh, force them inside then, because they seem to be um, troubling us with those crosses, and we're not great aerially with Vanden Branden and Bellato at the uh, back. And now they've got a corner. This could be very ugly. Oh god, <laughs> Abdel Mumin. Uh, has made it 3-0. We've only played 19 minutes. This is going to be a long day. I mean, I can see why these guys are top of the league. They've scored three goals within 20 minutes. Um, I've got to go for a berate because this is just not good. And the Lecter have overtaken us. So we're down to seventh. But thankfully, Ghent aren't winning. So we will hopefully be okay. 
Okay, two minutes of injury time. I just want half time now because, um, yeah, this has been one of the worst 45 minutes buzz of football we've had. I know Genka top, but they have absolutely destroyed us. And Hayden is through again here. How much space did he have? Where the hell was the defence? It's hit the post and it's been cleared by Vanden Brandon, but I don't know where the defence was there. Uh, well, I was about to say, uh, mercifully, it's half time, but it's not yet. There's still one more highlight. It's Sheka. Munoz doesn't quite win that. And a Dingra, wow. That gets given. It's 4 0. It is Friday the 13th that I'm recording this on. This is going to be an ugly one, isn't it? Sraf with a cross. And yeah, we just can't compete aerially. Boknovic and Neuster are so much better in the air than, than well, Bilato is. That was a pathetic first half. I thrashed the arms. I didn't go for the bottle throw. I thrashed the arms. Right. What the hell do we do about that? Right. Bilato's coming off. Van Leberg is going to go in at centre-back. Essahel is going to replace Balato. I want him off the pitch because that was one of the worst performances in a Mechelen shirt we've ever had. I'm not even going to do a shout or anything. I'm just... This game's over. We just need to get through this 45 minutes and try and, well, stop them from scoring more goals. It's just damage limitation at this point. Hopefully, this won't turn into an embarrassing scoreline. It's already our heaviest defeat. Heyman. And here's a Dingra. And he's been a real problem in this game. And that's going to be five. <laughs> We're not even two minutes in, in the second half. Oh my God, this is this is painful. This is a really painful. <laughs> what what the hell do we do about... How, how many is this going to be? How many is this going to be? Oh my God, this is actually painful to watch. I mean, Schultz on a 5.9. Good Johnson's on a 5.9. I mean, what the hell do you do about this? The injuries have come at the worst possible time. That we, we, we have three injuries and a suspension, and they're all in the back line. Let's get off Togi and bring on Troyore. 20 minutes to go. Come on, let's not concede any more goals. Let's try and score one. Let's just try and score. Bondo, Munoz, and Oachi, that's going to be six. Oh, no, he skied it. Right, I've gone cautious just to try and maybe get a counter-attack of some sort and try and stop them from scoring like a sixth goal. We're into the last 10 minutes. Thankfully, the second half hasn't been nearly as bad. But that first half was just embarrassing. It's a Muzu to Gilmano. And, well, that's hit the frame of the goal. It's hit the bar. 5-0 looks like it's going to be the final score, but there is still a few minutes left. A Muzu with a corner here. Two minutes to go. And there's number six. And it's on the watcher again. And that's his hat-trick as well. Three for him. 6-0. That's the heaviest defeat all save. Heaviest defeat I think I've had on FM in a very long time. When was the last time I lost 6-0? Jesus, I didn't even know. I mean, hopefully it's not going to be seven here. There are just seconds to go. This will be probably the last um, highlight of the game. Storm trying to stay with Balde here. And oh, it is seven. Oh, no, has got a fourth. Oh, my God. It's 7-0. I don't I don't remember the last time or if I have lost 7-0. Like even I don't even know. Oh, this is one of the worst games I've ever had. I mean, they're top of the table and we have three injuries and a suspension. But Jesus Christ. We just didn't really have the personnel to deal with that. We didn't have the aerial presence of Botnovitz and uh Noster. And that's the heaviest defeat I've had in a very long time. Maybe even ever. And Alex and Ghent did both win their games. Lamel lost. So there is still a chance that we could fall out of the top eight in the last day. And we have a really tough game as we host Charleroi, who were fifth. So this could end in tears. We could fall out of the top eight if uh, results don't go our way. Ghent and Lamel need to win their matches to get into the top eight. That much is true. If we win, we're in. If we draw and Lamel and Ghent both win... Uh, then Lamella will overtake us because they have more wins than us. Again, we'll have the same number of wins than us, but at the moment, their goal difference is four less. So if we draw and Ghent win, Ghent need a four-goal swing to get into the European playoffs, and then we will fall out. But we need Lamel and Ghent to both fail to win to you know have a chance of us getting in. Okay, that's quite a nice gesture. The players are actually refunding the fans who bought tickets for that 7-0. I, I haven't seen that before. Which probably detriment to the fact that I don't often lose 7 0. Okay, here we go. Last game. Charlotte at home. We need to keep an eye on Ghent and Lamel. If we win, we've done the job. If we drop points, then it's up to them two to win if they want to get into European places. 
Okay, we've changed the lineup slightly. Blato and Vandenberg now at centre back. Scholstad's in defensive midfield. Essahel's in. So Vandenbranden's out of the side. Konata's back, so he's back in left back. Basilio's back up further forwards. I've said that I want to see an improvement from everybody because that was one of the worst games I've ever had in Football Manager. I know it was against top of the league's Genk, but still, 7 0 against anybody is just horrific. So let's see if we can bounce back. And if we can win then we will at the very least um, stay in Europe. If we drop points, it's up to Lamel and Ghent to try and sneak into the top eight. And Lamel are already winning. And Charleroi have a corner kick here. And it's saved by Rudy De Boer. Ten minutes in, first chance goes to the visitors. Walsh does well to head that forward. It's Van der Neyden. Now to Togi. Here's Good Johnson. Essahel. Van der Neyden. Oh, will he get there first? Is he going to score? No, not quite. Just a bit too tight of an angle for him. Lamel are winning 1-0 with a penalty. So they have overtaken this into 7th. Again, though, still goalless. But they're against bottom club Muscron, who are already down. So they should really be winning that game. We have a corner. And, oh, it's off the post. It's Bellato now. It's Vandenberg. And that's off the post again. God, it's going to be one of those, is it? And, oh, no. We're back again here. Bellato. This highlight's still going. And now it's over. Uh, it's going to be one of those games today, is it? We've already hit the post twice. So as it stands, we're looking at a eighth place. But again, uh, need to win to uh, stay in there. And they also need to win by four as well if we get held nil-nil. And they are 1-0 up with Popescu. It's not going to be enough for them because, like I said, they need to win by four if we stay goalless. If we end up losing, then they will overtake us. Uh, if we win, then we're through. But our finishing hasn't been good enough today. Um, haven't had a lot of possession. We hit the work twice, so we've been a little bit unlucky. But yeah... I haven't been able to win. And, well, that's cleared off the line. And it's besides to Clement. Beside with the ball back again here. Charlotte are trying to find a goal. And that's going to go out for a corner. 20 minutes to go. Can we get a win here? I mean, as it stands, we should still be in eighth place. But it's been a pretty bad end to the season. Uh, looks like Ghent aren't going to be able to get the score that they need or the goals that they need. So despite us losing our last two games, we will still be in eighth place. Five minutes to go. Uh, it's been an underwhelming game today. Uh, maybe unlucky not to have scored with those chances, but it looks like it's going to end nil-nil. I mean, although we haven't even lost. This means saying we're going to lose our last two games. This has actually been nil-nil. It's been a pretty drab match, but we've done enough just to uh, qualify for the European Places playoff. Just unlucky not to score there. We had like what, a couple of big chances within seconds of each other, but other than that, it was a pretty poor match. Lamel won 2-0 against Zolta, so they overtake us into seventh. But again, we're actually pegged back three minutes from time by Postalaki and Muscron. So they actually uh, ended up drawing 1-1, which means that there were two points behind us. Even if we had lost that game, we still would have been in eighth place. So what happens now is we face the other sides from fifth to eighth twice. So two more games against Charleroi, two more against Anderlecht, and two more against Lamel. Our points have been halved. So there are just three points separating these four sides. The side that finishes top in this playoff will qualify for the European playoff final. And that will be against the side that finishes fourth in the championship group between Genk, Club Bruges, Antwerp and Ostende. So whoever finishes fourth from this faces the winner of the European Places playoff. And in that game, the winner qualifies for the Europa Conference League next season. I don't think we're going to get top of that group, but we'll give it our best shot. So I'm not quite sure how we're going to do this. We've got six games to get through. We're trying to get to the top of this playoff group. And there are just three points in it, so it's definitely doable. I guess we'll see what happens. I think if there's a chance that we could actually get into that European final, then um, I think we'll definitely get some on camera. If not, I think we might just jump ahead to the last game against Lamel. Um, we'll see how things go because I'm not really sure how we're going to do this in terms of video. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below, leave comments and subscribe if you haven't or if you're new. Uh, turn notifications on. Uh, one of the heaviest defeats I think I've ever had on the channel today. A 7-0 is a rarity on any channel. So not a nice one there, even though it was against the top of the league. We drew against Charleroi and that was enough uh, to see us qualify for the European places playoff seeing as Ghent did not win their game. So we have done enough, just. The next episode, we'll see if we can qualify for the European playoff final. We are just three points off it, so it's definitely doable. It's going to be tough, though. We'll see what we can do. But for now, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.